Hi, my name is Jack. In this channel, I talk about personal finance, adulting, and self-improvement. And today, in this video, let's talk about the important checklist to do after getting an insurance policy. This is actually a part 2 video about life insurance policies. If you haven't seen the first one, I'll link it in the show notes in the upper corner of the screen or in the description box down below. The first video talks about the things that you have to do before you get your life insurance policy. And for this video, which is in part 2 video, let's talk about the things or your checklist that you have to do after you get your life insurance policy. I'm a former insurance advisor and I work in the industry for the past three and a half years and if there's one common thing that I notice to most clients is that they tend to procrastinate to register their policy online. I know it sounds so basic pero to to if you already have a life insurance policy, let's take a poll, it will be on the right corner of your screen. Uh, yung tanong lang is, have you registered your policy on its first year. It's just a yes or no question. Now, this is not a requirement. You could choose not to register your policy online and it will not affect your policy. I just want to clarify that. But if you want to easily monitor and access your policy, dude, you could do it through an app in your phone or kaya naman sa website on your computer. It will just make your life easier. So ayun, if you haven't already registered your policy online, it might be a good time to take action. So for those naman who have already registered their policy online, good for you. Number two on my checklist is to check in spelling ng names ng beneficiaries mo and their birth dates upon receiving yung policy contract mo. If your policy is under an insurance company that uses digital equipment upon application ng policy mo, it would be less likely na magkakamali si sa pag encode ng beneficiaries mo, but still, check it. Now, for those insurance companies that uses written application, I highly, highly encourage you na to check yung names ng beneficiaries mo and their birth dates cause human error is highly possible to happen kasi nga pwede magkamali ng pagkakabasa yung underwriter dun sa sinulat nyo. So this is a good practice to add in your checklist upon receiving yung policy contract nyo. Number three, skim through your policy contract. Now, once na receive mo yung policy contract mo, it is intimidating to read. Para siyang online agreement form dun sa internet na gusto mo na pumunta sa bottom ng screen and tick I agree because wala ka naman choice. Hindi, joke lang. Just take a glance, skim through your policy kasi dun mo makikita yung mga inclusions, exclusions, and boundaries of that policy. Just take a look if there's something na magkakot ng attention mo, then ask your advisor to clarify it for you. And if wala naman nakakuha ng attention mo, okay lang din yun. Number four, get a copy of your acknowledgement receipt form. It's a piece of paper or kaya naman if it's digital, it's a digital page na pipirmahan mo para lang to acknowledge na na-receive mo nga talaga yung policy contract mo. Just keep a copy, pwedeng digital, so photo or scan or kaya naman carbon copy paper nung pinirmahan mo. It's just a good practice na to keep a copy ng mga importanteng files na pinipirmahan natin. Number five and most important para sa akin is to ask your advisor to make a summary of your policy. So, pasulatin mo lang sa kanya sa isang piece of paper yung summary ng policy mo para isang tingin mo lang alam mo na agad yung mga things na kailangan mong malaman about your policy. Hindi mo na siya kailangan hanap-hanapin sa iba't ibang page of your contract. Write down the following. Policy number, face amount, ito yung insurance value of the policy, riders and its corresponding value, ito yung additional benefits, more than debt benefit. Important dates, yung settlement date ng policy, how long yung payment, is it 5 years, 10 years, or whatever it is. What is the purpose of the policy? Is it income protection, health protection, college fund, estate tax, etc. Lastly, yung customer hotline and yung advisor contact number. Which leads us to number 6 and the last, and that is to conduct annual policy review. So after a year, meet up again with your advisor, ilabas mo yung pinagawa mo sa kanyang summary of your policy contract, and take a review of it and i-compare mo to sa life mo ngayon. Ask yourself with the guidance of your advisor, is this policy still enough for my needs? And if the answer is yes, wala ka nang need to get a new policy. But if the answer is no, then tingnan mo yung mga options mo with your advisor what policy could parang provide for your needs. Again, just to be fair, educate yourself about personal finance na ikaw mismo sa sarili mo, you could conduct your own financial planning or financial needs analysis. Because malay mo, diba, binibentahan ka lang nung advisor mo and let's just be transparent. That's it for this video. If you have questions about your policy, go ask your own advisor. If you have video recommendations, I'll be willing to read them in the comment sections down below. Again, I just want to thank everyone who hit the subscribe button. We finally hit a thousand subs after two long years And from the bottom of my heart, salamat, salamat.
I hope you stick around for the journey. Again, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, leave some comments, blah, blah, blah. I right, see you in the next video. Bye!